Okay, so we're looking at Sestina now. Um, and in contrast to all of other bishop, all of the other bishop poems that we're looking at, this one is far more structured. It falls into the very strict rhythm of the Sestina format, um, where there is repeated um six repeated words in a particular order. For us in this poem, the repeated words are house, grandmother, child, stove, almanac, and tears. Um, and this is a house of sadness. The September rain falls on the house and the failing light. So everything is grief and sadness. And there's an overlying sense of gloom and doom that pervades throughout the atmosphere. Um, the idea of the grandmother hiding her sadness from the child um, shows that perhaps that she's protecting her. Um, but despite the coziness that's created by the image of the stove and the sharing of the jokes from the almanac, there's grief here and the tone becomes more sinister. Um, the almanac takes on great power and because the child, again, this is written retrospectively by Bishop. So um, she's coming at it from a child's perspective. There is um, a sense that the almanac has been given this level of power where it can predict the future, which is, of course, what the almanac gave the moon cycles and the tides and it was google in a book basically and it was something that every household had and cherished and treasured because it was full of important information that was necessary for the harvest or for doing business so um it was a really important thing to have and it takes on this godlike quality as it is is foretelling the sadness and the grief to come um but for um, Bishop, the grandmother is almost an abstract presence. She isn't fully there. She um, hides her emotion. Um, she kind of goes about her business. Time for tea now. Um, the importance of routine and how things are, how things should be pervades. And that is replicated in the structure and format of the poem. So the rain underscores the mood and heightens the sense of melancholy. So the use of the weather to show the level of sadness, so a little bit of pathetic fallacy here. Um, but we can see it continuously throughout the poem, the idea of it even starting with um, the September rain, the failing light. So it's giving us a sort of um, despondent atmosphere to begin with. And inside this house, despite the trappings of coziness, there is sadness. And again, the child tries to understand, like First Death in Nova Scotia, she desperately tries to understand what it means. Um, and the kettle is personified. The kettle is crying. The grandmother is crying. Why is there grief? Why is there so much sadness? Um, and the grandmother, although she tries to control things, she tries to busy herself and um, life must go on. The child bishop struggles to understand what that really means. So the almanac hovers over them um, almost menacingly with its power, with its um, great knowledge um, and reverence. And it hovers there godlike, but it's almost menacing, all seeing, all encompassing, um, omnipresent. And the idea of the teacup being full of brown tears is, is a really bleak image of the grandmother crying into her tea. Um, and the child really struggles to understand. So the room is no longer cozy and it's, it's similar to the cold, cold parlor in First Death in Nova Scotia. Um, the use of the childlike language and the familiar images um, are all things that we can understand. And it's that's how Bishop is trying to quantify, again, like First Death in Nova Scotia, tries to quantify the experience. And she's drawing um, the house as a house would be or the world view of the house. So with crayons, the child draws a rigid house. And this idea of constantly trying to understand what home means, because this home is full of grief and full of sadness. And there's a desperate sense of knowing and not knowing that trauma that has continued on from first death in Nova Scotia. And the desire Bishop has to be part of a family and to understand what a home really means.